your word topography is just a fancy way of saying knowing how to find your way around the physical characteristics of a shorebird, how to know what you're looking at. It's not necessary to know about shorebird topography to be able to enjoy them, but learning the different parts of the bird, the different groups of feathers and how they relate to one another will help you to be able to see more and to understand what you're seeing. It's also essential to begin to understand more about plumage and molt, the process by which shorebirds change one set of feathers for another and that in turn can greatly assist you in the process of identification. The good news is you already know the names of many parts of a shorebird. You know which are the legs, the toes, the eye, the head and so on. So what these videos will do is hopefully add another level of detail which will help you to figure out where different colors and patterns are located on a bird. To help us to do this I'm going to use Malaysian plover as our reference. It's one of the few shorebird species which live in Malaysia year-round. In this video we're just going to focus on the shorebird's head and we'll start with what we call the bare parts, the eye and the bill. If you look carefully there's a thin ring of skin around the eye. It's known as the orbital ring. Sometimes, as in species like little ring plover, the orbital ring can be a very different color from the eye and from the surrounding face. For example, uh, in, the, in the case of little ring plover, it's bright yellow. At other times, it's a similar color to the eye and then it's difficult to pick out. Just outside of the orbital ring is a, another ring, but this time it's feathers and this is the eye ring. Uh, quite often it's pale or at least pale on the lower half and if the rest of the, the head is dark then the eye ring can stand out as a useful identification feature. Moving on to the bill, the bill is made up of two parts, uh, the upper mandible which is fixed to the skull and is therefore not the, the bird can't move it independently of the skull just like we can't and then the lower mandible which is hinged and can move up and down. Another part of the bill that's very useful for identification of some groups of species is the top edge or the culmen of the bill. In some plover species the shape of the culmen and in particular the the bulge on the culmen how far down that occurs is critical in identifying things like greater Tibetan and Siberian sand plovers. You can also see on the bill here the nostril and the gape which is the point of the bill nearest to the eye where the, where the bill meets the, 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 the head. If we look at uh, the, the head of this bird, we can imagine or see a, a line that runs from the bill right the way through the eye to the back of the head. And that's known as the eye stripe, because often it is, at least if it's a different color than the rest of the head, uh, then it's, it stands out. It's actually a dividing line between two groups of feathers and we can look at the bird's head by uh, looking at the parts above the eye line or the eye stripe and the parts below. But uh, the eye stripe itself is made up of two parts. The part in front of the eye is known as the laws and that, that's often dark and made up of short stiff feathers. And then the part behind the eye, um, <clears throat> we may just call it the eye stripe or the post ocular stripe. So looking at the part of the bird's head above the eye stripe, uh, we start off with the part nearest the bill, the forehead. In this case, it's white. And then moving back on the head, the next part is the crown. And the crown itself can be patterned. You can see on this bird, it has a frontal bar at the front of the crown or on the forecrown. Some birds have a central crown stripe and often also dark lateral crown stripes looking at the edge of the crown. So there are different parts of the crown that can be useful for identification. Between the crown and the eye is another very important part of the supercilium or the eyebrow and the supercilium is often uh, white or pale or significantly paler than the rest of the head and so noticing how long the supercilium is, how far behind the eye it extends whether it is brighter in front of the eye than behind the eye or vice versa, the shape of the end of the supercilium, whether it ends in a point or a more square ended shape, all of these things are important when uh, trying to identify some species.
Moving on to the area now below the eye, the eye stripe, first of all, the back of the neck is known as the nape. And uh, the Malaysian plover, along with Kentish and the ring plovers, have a white nape, uh, a white collar, in fact, which separates them from the sand plovers. Then the next uh, area of feathers are the ear coverts. And they're called the ear coverts because this group of feathers actually covers the ear on the bird, which is situated just behind and below the eye. Ear coverts uh, sometimes have uh, patterns such as streaking, or in this case, uh, the bird has a dark spot towards the rear end of the, or the rear corner, the top rear corner of the ear coverts. At the lower border of the ear coverts is an area called the malar, and it also extends round the back, round the bottom of the ear coverts, which we might call the side of the neck. In this case, it's just pure white. Moving on to the uh, lower side, but under the bill there, we have uh, that small area known as the chin, and then the rest of that area would be the throat. So we've covered the whole head, and in the next video, we'll have a look at the rest of the bird.